possible, right? Mm. To prove the existence of the external world. But can you, can you, it's, it's the same thing, but can you, can you... Like with any kind of empirical methods. No, no, obviously, you can't, you can't prove away for like certain theological aspects of the exactly. you know, of, of science. Saying, like our belief that the prophet is alive is a subsidiary of our theological base, which is... So how do, you, how, how do you know this prophet is truly alive? How do you know he was a true man? I would say that once you have the theological basis of the religion, of like we're not going to debate like the existence of God, so mm. right, me and you, because we're, yeah, yeah. we have a commonality in belief. Mm. Insofar as somebody believes that God is true, and they have, let's say, good reasons for believing the Quran is mm. true, then everything that's subsidiary to that is natural. It doesn't need like external sourcing necessarily. That's right. Like I can believe angels exist, even if somebody says, well, you don't have external sourcing, mm. right? But you know Muhammad, so, but the things I can't trust about him, right? Because what- like, I'm not trying to debate you. I know, but the thing to... I want to mention to you, with Muhammad, the things we can't, I can't trust about him, because he was given these revelations and he was the one that pretty much made the but Quran. You can see that Muslims are not praying to the Prophet in their prayer. Like I, I, still, I see as it is, but, as, but you can, we, can, we can obviously concede, we can, we, can, we can get out the argument, but I still see no, as it is. I just is. mean like when you say that they're praying to him, when they're saying, peace be upon you, O Prophet, they're asking God, and then they say, and upon all the No, no, but it's literally saying, it says, peace be upon you, O Prophet. It's yeah. like me saying, peace be upon you, brother, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you say peace be upon you, prophet, you're directly saying it to him. Yeah, because the, we believe the angel carries it to him. It's not. But he doesn't have a device. So he, you're saying he, you're saying he's alive. Where is he? Uh, yeah, in Surah Al-Baqarah it says that you know the shuhada are not dead in their graves. Uh, the prophets, the earth doesn't take them. Like in mm. Islamic normative theology, the so you believe Muhammad is alive in the grave? In some liminal sense, yeah. Is there seventy-two virgins there as well? Uh, I'm not sure. Because you know, because basically when you as so. In the afterlife, you believe in a grave that you will have a, a heaven and a, um, a hell. I think that's relevant to our given question. Like, if we're asking, is the Prophet alive in the grave? According to normative Islamic theology, he's in a liminal sense alive in that he yeah. receives the blessings of the believers. Because we say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, my belief is that right now the angel Gabriel took it to the grave of the Prophet and presented it. But you know how you said it is Muhammad is alive in the grave? Let's say, he's alive, let's say for the sake of argument, he's alive in the grave, right? Yeah. So we, we see in Islam, right, in the grave, right? I heard it many times before. That you're, that you're either tormented in the grave, right, or you'll you'll have a, you'll have a paradise in the grave. But in the grave, is there well, is there seventy two is there seventy two virgins in the grave? I'm not sure, but what I would say is like the garden that's available to you is not like heaven itself. You get a you get a snapshot of what heaven that's available. Mm. No, because 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 I have many times Muslims said like you're in the grave, you'll have, you'll you'll have the paradise. Well, you right? get a, you get a vision of the paradise that's available. To you. Yeah, you don't have paradise itself until. Mm. You know, after the reckoning and everything. Yeah, but I would just yeah. say this is not. It, I, I, I think. I so you see, so you're saying Muhammad is just like visioning heaven. Not visioning in the sense of like imagining, but that you get like literally from what uh, you get like a window, let's say, in which you can literally see. But how can Muhammad be in a grave and Isa is in heaven? Isa in the Quran, Allah saved him and brought him to heaven. But Muhammad is meant to be the greatest example, somebody I am to follow. But he's in the grave. And Why is he not in heaven? Knock, right? he's in heaven? But Jesus, we believe Jesus is in heaven. We follow Jesus. Our main head is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is in heaven. He always was and always will. Always was and always will well, be in heaven. Jesus, according to Islamic normative theology, at one day will pass away. It's just not right now. Uh, I would also say Enoch, you know Idris, Enoch. Idris, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's alive in heaven. God turned oh, no, no, we, so we believe, we believe in Christianity. There's like, there's, there's like levels. So like, so we have, we have heaven, then we have Hades. So these prophets at that time they went to like a place called Hades. Well, in Islamic right? normative theology, Enoch is in heaven. Heaven, so yes. Yeah. It's not exclusive to Jesus that mm. he's the only prophet. But this is fair. Muhammad is meant to be the greatest example, right? But I see other people much better than him. I see other. I see. Of course he's dead. Everybody who yeah, this earth has died. Yeah, I see other people much better than Jesus in heaven. And it literally says... Much better than Jesus? Uh, no, Jesus, uh, than Muhammad in, um, in the Bible and in the Quran. Like Isa was sinless. Muhammad was a sinner. Isa is coming back to judge the world. Muhammad is not. Like my, I have to look at who this man Isa is. Muhammad, because when he's also... I believe sin is anything that transgress, transgresses against God's commandments, right? And in the Quran it says, oh Muhammad, Ask Allah for the forgiveness of your sin. So what was that sin that Muhammad had committed? Are, are you aware of what the sin was? No, but it's, I, sin is something that, you know, if, if you're asking forgiveness from God. But I think, like, do you know the context of that specific verse, so to speak? But a sin's a sin. Whether it's a minor or major, sin's still a sin. You still transgress against God. I minor major thing is the best way to look at it. That's what Muslim said. That's what Muslim said. I, 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 the person that was here earlier, I don't think he instructed in the best fashion. Mm. A better way to look at it is that, like, say in Islamic law, if you're familiar, there's like five categories an action can have, right? Mubah, Mustahab, right? Makru, Haram, Halal, whatever. Mm. 
there is a way to be outside of that. If you've ever heard of like adab, just generally. Adab. So, your idea of what your sinfulness is, is relative to your morality. So if you know... Yeah, but, it's, it's, do it, but, but still, he, you ask forgiveness from your parents because you might have done something wrong. And asking forgiveness from Allah, I'm right? Who is a God who forgives sins. You have definitely done something wrong. But Jesus will sin this. You know, it says this, right? The Prophet said, when any human being is born, Satan touches him at both sides of the, of the body, except Jesus. What was so special about Jesus that even Muhammad admitted that he was that even Muhammad admitted that Satan could not touch Jesus? And brother, 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 brother. Satan touched Je uh, Satan touched Muhammad. Satan had an effect on Muhammad. Uh, Bukhari, Bukhari, Sahib is authentic. You know, I'm saying it's qualified by another hadith where the Prophet says, When I was born, the angels came and took on my heart and washed it before I ever committed any evil. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, but Satan later on in life did touch Muhammad because we can see him being affected by black magic. But Jesus in well, the black Quran, magic is not in the in, in in the Quran, black magic, man, come on. Black magic is not Satan touching. Because it says it says it says Muhammad. Well, it said Muhammad was, uh, that's con that's was bewitched, wrong. so that he began to imagine something he had not yet done. And also says magic was worked on Allah's messenger, so that he began to imagine he had sexual relation with his wife while he had not. So how can I trust this man? How can I trust this man? Uh, source of this. Okay, okay. It's conceptually but wrong the, to say the, magic is the, So what is it? Because like, I don't think God is going to give you hallucination of you having sex with nine wives. I don't think that's from, that's from God. There has to be a demonic force. Let's see what the source is for that. Okay. Also, I heard you before saying minor sins and major sins, it's all the same. But it sins is still a sin though. It's no, quite a crime. No, 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 no. If I get angry at a situation, I'm just like, mm. You still that's, sin. That's a minor sin. You still sin though. Say that's equal to a major sin. Okay. Like me but Jesus me. didn't know minor sins or major sins. He literal sinless. When Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness, he defeated every I'm single not, temptation. I'm opposed to Jesus being sinless. Mm. It, it may have been sinless. But here it says, but I, so, okay. So Muhammad, he received revelations, right? <laughs> How do I know these revelations really were hallucinations or not? Right, because it says here, as, I, as I was saying to you, as I was saying to you, I was saying to you, right, magic was worked on Allah's yeah. messenger so that he used to think he has was sexual relations while his wife, while he actually had not done. Uh, yes, I, 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 I cannot trust Bukhari, and I cannot trust a man who is who was possessed by magic and him, him hallucinating him having sex with nine wives in one go. But I cannot trust the, a man. Isn't the point I, of it a consciousness that reflects that they know when he's under, say, black magic and when he's not? As in, to rely on this epistemic, yes. you have to verify that they had the epistemic certainty to tell when it's in place and when it's not in place. It so says Bukhari is really an authentic hadith. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as soon as you rely on this, that says, like, imagine I'm like, you know, yesterday I was not feeling the best. But this is meant to be the greatest example. But Jesus, that's what I'm saying. So I'm Muhammad, Muhammad, Satan had an effect on him. But Jesus, not nothing Satan. affected him. Uh, not so, so how can someone who's unaffected by Satan be an example for human beings? We're affected by because Satan. it shows us how to defeat, how to defeat the temptation of the devil, how to defeat when Satan comes no, to you. So, but should, but Muhammad uh, couldn't should, defeat Satan. You need to be affected by it to, in order to defeat it. If you're immune to being affected by it, mm. then that's like a, a perfect thing that we can't help. Okay. Like if Jesus, okay, I'll just say this. I think there's a logical problem in the way you're constructing this and that. No, 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 bro, come on, man. The epistemic certainty of saying that, oh, I know when this person was, let's say, under black magic, and I know when he wasn't. It's kind of bizarre to say, yeah. well, I can't trust him. Okay, let's say, let's say, okay, so let's say sometimes he was possessed by black magic, and sometimes he wasn't. How do I know the time he wasn't possessed by black magic? on this to say that. But how do I know the times he wasn't possessed by black magic when, yeah. like, because was I think it really? Because Texas consciously okay. aware of it, right? Like it's telling you literally. At this time, he was affected by black yeah. magic. Right? Yeah, yeah. So presumably, if the idea was that there's some epistemic uncertainty, it would either not mention this whatsoever, or but the, it would the, not the, the main the conclusion we the, when it happens and when okay. It but the main happen. conclusion we have here is Maham, the black magic still had an effect on him, whether yeah, sure. whether it was sometime later or sometime before, right? And another thing we have, right? When he's re receiving these revelations from the angel Gabriel. Will you agree that black magic is not from Satan? That's not I believe from Satan. I believe from Satan. Okay, but if you believe something, you shouldn't... Like, Islam is an inherently, conceptually coherent system. You can't be like, from my Christian perspective... So do you believe God is going to give you... A like a do you think God is going to give you hallucinations of you having sex with nine wives in one go? Do you believe that in the... Old I asked you first, come on, I asked you first. No, but I'm asking you a question that will help figure out why you think this is wrong. Do you think that in the Old Testament, Lot slept with his two daughters? 
Okay, so as I said, the Old Testament, we don't follow all these other prophets, right? No, but I'm saying our main head is Jesus. The Old Testament is our main head is Jesus. Yes. Right? Yes. So Jesus in the Old Testament wrote that Lot had sex with his two daughters. Yes. And you believe that to be true? Yes. But and we don't believe we don't believe God commanded Lot. Sure, I'm not it was literally that. Lot's I'm daughter, the lustful intent. They no, they managed they, they tried to have sex with his father. Like God commanded Muhammad to be affected by But I'm saying did Jacob wrestle with the angel Gabriel? We believe Jacob wrestled with God. We believe God. We believe God comes down to His creation and interacts with them. The light, the, the way how we wrestle with sin, the way how we so wrestle with temptation. So God wrestled with Jacob. Things, right? And so far as you believe all those things, mm. do you think it's really unreasonable to say that the prophet initially was uncomfortable with the revelation, but then later became comfortable by it? Like, is that such an unreasonable belief? Okay, okay. My my main point to you was my main point to you was right. So with the black magic thing, right? So when he was possessed, right? At one time, right? He said he was he started hallucinating him having sex with nine wives, right? And these other revelations he said he was receiving from Allah. How do I know whether it was from Allah or whether it was him hallucinating him having visions from the angel? How do I know? Because you look at the claim. I, I would you look just at the claim, like, you test the claim. Mm. It's not even relevant. Like, even if that wasn't in the text, you would still have good reason to believe, like, oh, it could just be a hallucination. Like, it's not a strong argument from the text to say, oh, the text said the Prophet was affected by black magic. Therefore, this text is possibly from black magic. You could say that he's hallucinating, even if it's not but, in the text. But we can know God God is not the type to do this. God is not the type no, to give somebody hallucinations of them having sex with nine wives in one go. As soon as you rely on the Quran to say, oh, the Quran said it was black magic, you're taking it as an epistemic certain source is what I'm saying. But then you're using it inconsistently. Because no, 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 no. For you to just be like, I don't believe anything the Quran says. This is a hadith. Anybody that, this is a hadith. Yeah, or the hadith. Like, as soon as you rely on an epistemically certain source, you can't rely on it inconsistently. You get what I mean? You can't be like, I believe in the first half of the hadith, but not the second half of the hadith. So in, you should just reject it outright. But you, like, I don't believe in No, but this, 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 this is what I'm saying. This is why I put my trust in Jesus because all through the Bible we see Jesus' perfection. Wait, wait, he said, I am the life, I am the resurrection. He literally proved, um, he literally proved his word by resurrecting from the dead. Okay. I'm just saying, it's you don't follow the Jesus we follow. You follow, you follow Isa as Salam. We follow Jesus Christ of the Bible. You just, try, you just said the same thing in two languages. You follow Isa of the, of the Quran. The Isa of the Quran, the Isa of the Quran is different to the Bible. We well, have a nice conversation, man. We well, have a nice conversation. I hear you, player. This guy, I listen to it. They almost speak to him. They, 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 they. His, his agenda's changed. I love you, brother. Brother, I love you. I don't, don't love you. Love I love you for the sake of Jesus. I love your mom. I love you. I love you for the sake of Jesus, brother. Akhi, let me say something. Jesus, tell me. Brother, take care, man. Take care. Yeah, yeah, take care. Brother, brother, take care. Brother, take care. Brother, take care, brother. I want to shake your hand. I love you. I love you. I love you as well. I love you. I love you.